One of the most powerful things that you can do to move forward in your career is delegate. It's also one of the things that most leaders struggle with. Stay tuned for my tips on how you can be a diligent delegator. Welcome to this episode of Smart Leadership with your host, speaker, author, and influencer, Beth Caldwell. So I work with a lot of women who tend to do everything at their workplace. You might be familiar with this woman. She is the go-to person that knows every process, every system, every secret, every answer, and solves every problem. If a crisis occurs, everyone turns to Nancy Know-It-All. She's invaluable to the company, and we don't even want to think about where we'd be if anything would happen to Nancy. Let's think about this, though. Being inval invaluable actually holds your company hostage. When everyone depends on one person to make all of the decisions and handle every issue, future leaders aren't able to respond and their talents go untapped. The worst part about being invaluable is that you'll never be promoted. Why would you be given a promotion or a pay raise if you're already being paid to do everything? Well, how can you change the situation? You begin by delegating. Now, here's the reason you don't want to delegate. You don't want to delegate because you are the person who can do the job best. Or so you think. I have a secret to tell you. There might be someone out there who can do the task better or faster than you can. You've just never given them a chance. The first thing that you need to do is make a list of all the tasks that you complete during your days and weeks. From that list, circle the items that only you can do. Here's an example. For running my own business, I might have a list of tasks during the day that include bookkeeping, invoicing, making phone calls, writing an email newsletter, working on my next book. On that list, the one thing that only I can do is the writing. The rest of those tasks, many of them can be delegated. But wait, what if you've trained everyone else to let you do the work and now you've changed your mind? Why would they want to have now after you've let them slide for years? Well, that might take some savviness and it's going to get some time before everyone's on board. Your team may resent the additional workload or they might fear that they're not qualified to handle the task. What you want to do is make them feel that their gifts are valuable to the team. Here's an example. Tom, as you know, our department is responsible for completing the monthly data report. I'd like to give that responsibility to you on a trial basis for the next few months. You are the expert on this topic, and I think it makes sense that you take over. Ideally, John will enthusiastically take over the task and do a great job for you, and shortly you can congratulate him and add even more responsibilities. If John doesn't do a great job, though, resist that urge to take the task back. Instead, say, how can we make this process better, John? Maybe he knows something you don't and will be able to come up with a better process. If after a few months things aren't excellent, you might have to delegate the task to someone else, but don't give up. Remember, if you want to be an influential leader, you're going to need to carefully remove yourself from tasks that can be and should be done by others. Just because you know how to do everything, doesn't mean you have to. Until next time, here's to your continued influence. Thank you for watching Smart Leadership with Beth Caldwell. For more leadership tips and to learn about having Beth inspire and motivate your audience, visit BethCaldwell.com. Also, browse the other shows found on this Biz TV Shows Network.